You know, when you look at a device this small, everyone hopes that, yeah, this is a great solution. This is a niche within a niche. Right. It's a okay. niche within a niche. All right. Got it. And so, when do you see the piston launching? Holiday season 2013. It's this year. And do you guys have any partners in terms of uh, floor space, like in stores, or, uh, you know, any sort of technology partners that can help sell the message of what this piston is? Um, Yes, but not that we're disclosing today. Okay. So there's still a lot to learn, is what you're saying. There's still to learn, and I have more to talk about because we just talked about the okay. first thing. Yeah, let's see it. So BYOC. Yeah. You understand what bring your own device yeah, is, right? Yeah. It's like a LAN party, right. more or less. The same Intel. Well, for business, it's like bring your own cell phone, bring your own tablet, bring your own laptop. Many businesses are actually encouraging people. It's a way of lowering their costs. We'll support you with that. We're saying that. As gamers, you own content or have access to content that you quote have acquired. You should be able to bring that content with you, regardless of what platform it was created for initially, and play it on a piston. We're working with developers right now on doing that, regardless of where it was developed for. Does that include, say, developing uh, the capabilities of OpenGL? Yes. Because I know Linux is something that you know anyone other than Microsoft is interested in right now. Because DirectX is such a popular library for people to use, and it's the most predominant. Whereas OpenGL is open. Right. It, it, remember, the piston is based upon the X3 modular computer platform, specifically right. the X7A, which will be launching later this year as well. And in that regard, we support both DirectX and OpenGL and OpenCL. So and it's just a determination of the user. Right. In terms of what operating system they go for. Yeah, we're going to ship standard with a Windows variant. We've not disclosed which version yet, but it is going to ship standard with Windows. But if someone says, I want to run the Linux on this, right. go ahead. We'll yeah. support you with that. Right. That should be your choice, not our choice. Right. We're going to Windows because that's where the biggest set of content is. That's where most of the developers are. But that's where most of the gamers are. Are you guys also working, though, to help develop OpenGL in terms of offering a platform that's standard in a way? Well, one of the things that we disclosed for the first time at South by Southwest, their gaming conference there, Gaming Expo, is our own user interface. That, open, that user interface will be shipping standard with Piston, and it will launch in the beginning. The user will be able to customize it to their needs, and you'll be able to bring your own content with you. And it's not just games. It'll be other software. It'll be music. It'll be movies. It'll be TV shows. And if you want to go off to Hulu and launch into Hulu and watch a show, you should be able to do that. Are you guys all within inside of the UI that comes with this? Are you thinking about virtualization at all in order to, to combat some of those issues with different libraries? We're not going to talk about that right now, but okay. Because I mean. If you're going to have that flexibility, I think there's got to be some sort of solution. At the end of the day, we're in discussions with developers, and developers need to be paid, right? And yeah. the bottom line is, this is what a lot of gamers don't understand, a lot of people don't understand. When you buy software, you're not really buying it. You're licensing, licensing it, yeah. right? The same is true with games. So, if a game developer developed a piece of software for a specific game console, that's what it's licensed to. Go talk to any attorney. So if you want to run that on a different piece of hardware, you've got to get the rights to do that. That goes back to the content developers and to the developer company and or to the publisher. So it's not a non-trivial thing to do, but it is doable. And people say, well, you can't do that. It's too hard. It's like, really? That's what people said about the music industry. Look what Apple did with iTunes. And now anybody can get any piece of music almost anywhere they want on almost any device they want. The same was true with TV shows and with movies. Guess what? You can do the same thing today. You just have to make sure that you take care of the people that are the creators, the content developers. So are we working on that? The answer is, of course. So uh, what do you have to show us today? Two more things. Okay. Cumulative gaming. The most popular games ever created are decades old. And a lot of your readers still own those consoles, still own those games. Why shouldn't you be able to play that game on the latest and greatest hardware as well as the latest and greatest game? 
Are you talking, machine. Are you talking PC games that are decades old or console games? Everything. 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 Why shouldn't you be able to do that? Well, the I mean, because a company like Nintendo... As a gamer, though, you have accumulated the rights to all sorts of games. Some thousands and thousands of dollars worth of games that they have paid for. And As a collector, I, I, I own games that I go know, I've decades seen. back. I've, I know. Got, I've got quite a bit. Why shouldn't you be able to pay out today on the latest and greatest machine? The answer is you should. Again, it's not non-trivial, right. but it can be done. And it should be up to the consumer where it's played. You've already paid for it, right? So is this where you see differentiating the XI line from a, a PC versus a console? Because I think a, a PC sends people, we have an operating system, there are games that are visually PC only. But it sounds like you're saying you're trying to sort of supersede that notion that it's limited to Windows, for lack of a better operating system as an example. And you say everything. I mean, that, to people that says Sega, that says Nintendo. I know. I understand. And right. I will tell you that we are playing in our offices right now at XI3 games that were not designed to run on a PC, right? So it is doable, it isn't trivial to do, right? Right. But if you have a favorite game that's 15 years old, why shouldn't you be able to play that today? What happens if your console's dead, you can't buy it? What happens if you don't want to use that console, you'd like to be able to use the latest controller? Obviously, like you say, it's not trivial. Sometimes it's hard to wrestle those licenses from people. It's all about growing your market about getting paid and solving what a customer wants to do. Make the customer happy, that's how we feel, right? There are hundreds of millions of gamers around the world. Why wouldn't you want to make them happy? Why wouldn't you want to make them love you because you've made it easier for them to do what they want to do? I think the one reason would be self-destruction. <laughs> if there's well, not enough capital to make that happen, because that's a very, that's a big challenge. If you're talking about licenses from companies that already own their own platforms, wrangling those those IPs away from them is non-trivial, but it's also almost perhaps insurmountable in some ways. Well, I, and, and I, I'm not going to try to suggest to you, Peter, that there will be some companies that will say, we don't want to play. Right. We don't want to do that. I think that's obvious. I mean, it's almost... Well, I could yeah. go through a list of three companies, and I could name one for sure that would say, maybe I don't want to play that game. Okay. That's their choice. And there may be more than one, but at the end of the day, we're going to try. And so we are trying, and we have developers that are coming to us saying, gee, we own the content, we want to make it available for our customers to play where they want to play. So we're going to support them. If you could give me a, uh, like a scale of gaming, let's say, if you're going to base it in terms of age and fidelity, what's, what's one and what's 100? What's the baseline and what's the, sort of the high end? High end as far as type of games? Yeah, I mean, I imagine, you know, like Call of Duty, modern PC games, based on the the, the list of hardware that I saw on the display over there. Right. You guys can play modern PC games, no problem. Absolutely. But what's the entire spectrum? I mean, are you... So, if I asked you yeah. the 100 most popular gaming titles of all time, do you know what number one is? Fair question. I, if it wasn't Mario, I would be surprised. Okay, I would be surprised as well. We can run Mario. Which, can you give me any specifics turn to what kind of, which, which Mario? Go all the way back to the beginning. So Nintendo is working with you guys to do that? I didn't say that. But you, but you will allow people legally to play Mario games. We are not saying that either. We're saying that we know it can be done. Okay. okay, and so we want to be able to offer that to consumers. Of course, you want Obviously. to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and we have developers that want to do that as well, and so those that are willing to work with us and see it's in their best interest and the best interest of their gamers, their consumers, we will do it. And those that say no, we don't want to do that. Right. We want to keep our consumers locked to our platforms. That's their decision. How do you feel about the conversions of consoles and PCs at this point? Because obviously you see Sony taking a totally different approach to what they had with the PlayStation 3. I mean, PlayStation 3, for all intents and purposes, is the most complicated platform that's ever been released. The most proprietary instruction set that anyone's ever had to deal with. And now they're saying, okay, now look, more or less off-the-shelf parts, x86 architecture is what we're going for, but it's still a console. So you're talking about stuff that's traditionally been relegated to consoles only, 
but you guys are a PC. Yeah, you're calling this a console, right? This is a console. This is a console. This is a console. Do you see a future where it's not PC, it's not console, it's just one gaming market? Well, is that, I guess is that. Are you guys trying to sort of be the impetus for that movement? I mean, at the risk of upsetting somebody like I think it's Paramount. I mean, what I really want is I want you know, beam me up, Scotty. I want to be able to walk into a holodeck. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Um, how many decades away is that? I don't know. But at some point, all technology is going to converge. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. But how far away is it? I have no idea. Right? Today, it's clear there are at least, not counting mobile, to set mobile aside, there are consoles and there are gaming computers. Right. Right? And there are things that are good in the console world and not so good. There are things that are good in the computer world and not so good. But the not so good in the consoles is they're typically impossible or really hard to upgrade. And they take a long time from one unit to the next unit. The, gener the generation has grown. It's, it's almost like, doubled in the yeah, last one. It, it's, it's like, and it's like dog years in Moore's Law, right? You've got new iterations of tech that keep coming out. And so as a gamer, you're out of luck, right? If you're locked to a console, you're out of luck. Now, many gamers have multiple rigs more than one console and a computer as well, right? But then you get back to the content. Right. But one of the things that's difficult about consoles is that upgradeability. It's negligible at that, right? Unless you break the terms of the service agreement, right? Right. Well, generally you can't. Most improve. people don't do that though. It scares no, no, no. the heck out of them. Yeah, I mean, so but but here we go. We have a, a modular device. Right. That's got PC components. Exactly. It's got a PC price point. Exactly. Because you've never seen a console sell for this much. We're not, but that's okay because what we see is this will be used not just for gaming. It'll be used for watching TV, right. watching movies, listening to music, doing your taxes, right? And gaming. And taking it with you if you want to take it with you. And it's really, really, really low power. I mean, it's under 40 watts of power versus hundreds, of course, a thousand well, I, watts I of power. I would say that the low power consumption is one of the strongest points of what you guys have. Right. That and the form factor are pretty impressive for the amount of power you're putting out. Exactly. I just, I feel like the price point is going to be a struggle for a lot of people. Well, and if if you're a gamer that's used to building your own computer, right. I mean, we've heard it, right? I can build something less than that that does the same thing. We hear them, we're listening, and we will have a response for them. Because at the end of the day, this may not be for them, but that's okay. Right. If, if there are people out there that say they can build a machine that is as powerful work-wise, that uses less electricity, as small as ours, that is upgradable and doesn't violate our patents, we want to hear from them. Right. We'd love to hear from them. And maybe they can help us do it even better. So that leads me to the next question. Where do you see Piston in the future? Today, it's, you know, it's still not available. It's still a product that's very new. But ultimately, it's about taking that next step, you know, one after another. Best wishes, best case scenario, what's the next step for Piston? Wow, we're not even shipping yet. You want me to talk about what's next? I don't need specifics. I guess I'm just curious. Well, so, so best, can, best case scenario. I, I can talk about that. I mean, from the very beginning, because it's based upon our modular computer design architecture, as new tech comes out, it'll be upgradable. We'll come out with new boards. The processor is not soldered into place. It's soldered. We're currently AMD. Well, they're coming out with new processors. Guess what? You'll be able to either buy a new board that has the processor and the RAM on it with potentially more RAM, or just buy the processor and remove the old processor and replace it with a new processor with greater capabilities, more capabilities for work. That's going to continue to happen. We'll continue to push the envelope as far as how many monitors you can support, or the power envelope as far as how much power you use, and um, other things. Right. Other things. Right. Thank you for your that time, help? Sir. That helps a lot. No, it's, I think there's a lot of talk about here, and I think that people might not really understand what it is. 
but this discussion definitely opened my eyes a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I hope that people can understand. You guys are trying to do something different. It's we a, are. It's you're calling it a console, but traditionally, it's very different from a console. It is. So. But it's it's one of the things that consoles have going for them. They're they're typically good looking. Most gaming rigs are ugly, right. and they're big, right? And well, they're closed platforms as well. This is not big, right? Right? Hello? It doesn't weigh a lot, right? Of course, but the problem is, is it costs a lot. Well, and whether that's a problem or not is for the consumer to decide. But if I can replace a console and a computer with one thing, True. then it does not cost a lot. That's a good point. Right? And that's the point, is that we will, this will work for serious, hardcore gamers, but they may not be the ideal market for us. The ideal market, I think, is really, really big. If you had been, it's, were you at South by Southwest, the gaming expo? If you had been there, you would have seen moms and dads bringing their kids from five and six year olds to teenagers flipping out over this because they had never seen it. And when they found out that it was a gaming computer, it looked cool and it ran the games, and they were fun. I mean, they, they were running really well. We had people say, "I'm buying now. I'll place an order right now." Even at the even at thousand dollars? At a thousand bucks, yes. So we are taking pre-orders right now, and yeah, it's. It's a new way of thinking about gaming. No question about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. No question right. about it. But we have a lot, a lot of developers that are very interested in working with us because they see this opportunity. Could you have done this five years ago? Well, XI3's development started over 10 years ago. I mean, like, maybe the market would have been ready for something like this five years ago. Or is is now the time for things to change and take on a new shape? I think that's a great question. I don't know that it would have been. I don't know that the capability would have been there in the size and the form factor. But more importantly, we had to have the intellectual property protection in place, the patents. We have set seven patents in the U.S. alone issued. Issue, not pending, issue. We have more than a thousand additional patents that are pending worldwide. So that's part of what we had to do before we went to market, is to make sure we had the IP in place. We, we understood that people would try to rip it off, right? So we're breaking new ground. I don't know if we could have done it five years ago, but we can do it now, and we are doing it now. We're selling computers right now, and people are buying. So. Peter, thank you. Thank you, David. Nice to visit. Yeah, absolutely. Nice to visit.